All right, let's talk about weed. Cannabis, marijuana, reefer, pot. It is a common colloquially accepted thing that you can basically smoke weed as much as you want to very little ill effects. That I found out is not true. I found some studies that indicated that frequent cannabis use is associated with 88% higher odds of coronary artery disease and 81% higher odds of stroke. And don't just take my word for it. This is the American College of Cardiology. I'm pretty sure this is looking at uh, Colorado, which has had legal weed in various forms for the longest. They've had recreational since 2012. A study evaluating acute heart attacks in 379,843 patients. That's a massive sample size. Heart attack admissions among cannabis users increased by 32% with a 60% increase in hospital mortality over four years. Frequent marijuana smoking was associated with 88 higher odds of heart attack and 81% higher odds of stroke. That is really fucking big. Alarmingly, marijuana users were younger and had a lower incidence of cardiac comorbidities, so you can have less or very few heart conditions and be more at risk for developing heart problems if you use marijuana frequently. Um, holy shit. I read this article and I feel like, wow, I've been fucking lied to by like everybody who's ever hawked weed as a harmless medicinal substance. Where is this again? The American College of Cardiology? This is a very credible source. Another thing Queen Snarf says is worth stating too, this article had an impact factor of 9.8, which means that its relevancy in number of citations a year has drastically increased compared to last year. Yeah, impact factor, that basically means how rock solid is this research? How much other research has cited and uh, corroborated these findings? That's uh, a credible impact factor is usually around three. Okay, this article is three times more credible than what scientists consider to be credible. All right, also I, I fucking turned the camera the wrong way. It's supposed to be that way, okay. This is what weed does to a motherfucker. Okay, there is a UK biobank with uh, 35,000 participants. The more than monthly smokers were significantly more likely than others to have a heart attack after controlling for other factors, including age, BMI, and sex. Frequent marijuana smokers were also more likely than non-users to have their first heart attack before the age of 50. That's fucking nuts. Inflammation in the blood vessels is a primary hallmark of atherosclerosis. A lot of people uh, in my notes were saying like, well, yeah, smoking anything is bad for you. Smoke. It's not just the smoke. It's THC itself. We got a cool chart from this, uh, from this paper here. So I know what some of these things mean. I know what marijuana is. There's this bow and arrow it's being fired from with a little weed leaf. That's cool. And this is an artery. This is a cross section of an artery. So let's say THC binds to the CB1R, and uh, I don't know what the fuck a MAPK pathway is, or a PP38, I don't know what the fuck that means. Antioxidant defenses go down, and there's this uh, interesting chemical reaction that happens that basically means the uh, walls of the arteries get inflamed, and it is possible for cholesterol to build up at sites of the inflammation. That's, that's how atherosclerosis works. Things inflame your arteries, things fuck with your arteries, and then whatever is in your blood uh, can uh, gather in the places where there's damage on the inside. This study also looks at genistein, which is a compound in soy. I gotta say, back when I was uh, in my basement, in like fucking seven joints a day with a, that's, that's an exaggeration. Smoking weed regularly in my basement and eating like bowls of edamame as a snack, that might have been good for me because it protects against this and it will still do a little bit of damage, but not so much. So most of the available data on marijuana triggering adverse cardiovascular events is observational and retrospective with several limitations due to the barriers that exist in conducting randomized controlled trials with marijuana schedule one designation. Like I said, a lot of this is self-reported data, which is why they were looking at places where weed has been legalized. If, if it's a criminal act to smoke weed, then people are going to be less likely to report that to an authority. This is gonna seem counterintuitive, but I am all for the descheduling of marijuana. We've already descheduled CBD, but I think we should deschedule THC because that does a few things. One, it allows us to perform tests 
and trials and study the actual chemical effects of THC better, which would lead to a better understanding of all of these things, and so that education about these substances can get better. Two, it makes people much more likely to self-report, which means that data like this can get more accurate. It does say, current evidence is insufficient to draw decisive conclusions on the effect of marijuana use on cardiovascular events. That is because we are very limited in the tools that we use to study these things. However, don't just take this sentence and throw the whole of this away. Like, okay, so they're saying they don't know. They're saying there's a very high statistical anomaly in marijuana use correlated with heart disease. However, an estimated more than 2 million U.S. adults who have cardiovascular disease report using marijuana, and providers must be aware of the potential risk of marijuana in precipitating cardiovascular events. So, that's the real point here. Um, if you have health issues, you probably shouldn't smoke weed. If you're over the age of 25, you probably shouldn't be smoking weed regularly. Um, and uh, if there's anything that you take that affects your heart rate, that affects your blood pressure, you should probably just stay off weed. You should, you should probably just avoid that. That would be my advice. I'm not a doctor, but I'm reading a scholarly article. That's what they say is uh, be cautious. Cannabis users' perception of pain seems to be higher than non-users and are more resistant to other forms of pain relief. With the exception of opioids, most pain relieving medications are barely better than placebo. That uh, also includes weed. Study compared patients undergoing surgery for a broken leg who said they had used cannabis before the operation to those who said they have not. Those who reported using weed received 58 more opioids per day while in the hospital and reported greater levels of pain on a scale of 1 to 10 and required an additional 12.4 milliliters of anesthesia during surgery than those who did not. If you have THC in your system, other painkillers don't work as well. Even opioids. We now understand patients who chronically use opioids prior to surgery often have exaggerated pain responses and need increased pain medication after surgery because they have increased tolerance. So it's similar to like, if you have an opioid tolerance from abusing painkillers, you're gonna need more painkillers to make you feel something, or make you not feel something rather. THC has a similar, a similar thing. I don't want the news summarized each morning, CNN. I don't give a f We speculate that cannabis use may cause a similar effect. But we need more research to determine if this is the case. This is one important thing, because a lot of people will read shit and they'll discredit it. Every researcher always says that because what they want there to be is more research. And I just wanna, just wanna caveat. Anytime you see we need more research, that doesn't mean we don't know. That means we would like to be more sure than we are. As far as anxiety goes, anxiety reactions and panic attacks are the acute symptoms most frequently associated with cannabis use. Understanding the relationship between cannabis and anxiety may clarify the mechanism of action. Results, frequent cannabis users consistently have a high prevalence of anxiety disorders, and patients with anxiety disorders have relatively high rates of cannabis use. However, it is unclear cannabis use increases the risk of developing long-lasting anxiety disorders. So there, there is, there may be a bit of a correlation causation thing going on here. Uh, people who are more anxious may smoke more weed, but it could also be that people who smoke more weed get more anxious. This is the last, uh, last thing, is basically people who start using cannabis before age of 15, used it frequently at 21 years of age, were more likely to report symptoms of anxiety disorders in early adulthood. So if we're gonna draw any correlation causation things, this, this is feasibly some pretty good evidence for causation. Again, it could be that people who smoke weed younger will just be the kinds of people who will have anxiety as an adult because of other compounding factors, but uh, this was that paper. If you end up at a party every two weeks or every month or so, uh, and someone's got a blunt and you hit that and you pass it around a circle and you go back to living your uh, you know, normal ass lifestyle, th there's probably not a huge risk factor for you. However, it's important to know the risks.